Louis had begun to fade visually as the drugs left my body. Never again did I see him so vividly as I had that strange, magical day he wafted through my front door. Though I could always still hear and feel him, I gradually had to use my inner eye and concentrate hard to see him. The shamanic gifts of Benzo Oz were waning. I saw my beloved dead much less often too. Expired family stopped popping in to offer love and support. I missed them. It was both heartbreaking and expected. I knew I couldn't live with one foot in reality and the other in an alternate dimension forever. That I'd known it was a passionate but doomed romance, however, didn't make it any easier as he began to disappear from sight. Louis would hold me, his voice and touch were still strong and comfort me. I will always watch over you, beloved. I will hold you in my arms when you die and be the first on the other side when you cross over. But I am still searching for the man with a piece of my soul who is seeking you as you do him. I will come to you in the flesh one day, beloved reborn. Trust me. Then one day he was gone. I could neither feel nor hear him. Being expected doesn't stop grief from hitting you like a tsunami. It felt like another piece of my soul had been ripped from my body. I listened to the song. Touch me, it's so easy to leave me, all alone with my memories of my days in the sun. If you touch me, you'll understand what happiness is. Look, a new day has begun. Why is it always so damn easy to leave me? So many beloved relatives and family friends. Now you too. I thought loving a dead guy was safe. Daylight, I must wait for the sunrise. I must think of a new life and I mustn't give in. When the dawn comes, tonight will be a memory too. And a new day will begin. If you're here, my love, thank you. You kept me safe when my taste in hallucinations was vastly better than my taste in visible men. Who wants to wander the streets at night when she has dishy Monsieur Riel at home? Or invite total strangers for tea? Ye gods, I miss you already. Bad nights of sleep were bearable with you to beguile them. But Louis, this I promise you, I will never give in. Even with hellish insomnia, I will never take another benzo. This I vow. My gorgeous, passionate rebel, poet, and great Canadian hero. Could you truly have been the real Riel and I, Gabriel Dumont, in my last life? People later asked me this often when I told them about it, and my answer is always the same. I won't know until I go. When I cross over, either I'll be stood up and hopping mad or holding him and never letting go. Are you still here, beloved? One last dance. Will you truly dance me to the end of love? What? I'm not gone, beloved, I'm here. Why can't you hear me? I will fight my way back to you. This I promise. And being Oz and rejoining reality. Well. Reality and I reunited, as my mind and I made it up. Turned out to be just a trial separation, not a divorce. I thought I'd reach safe harbor at last, both feet firmly planted on Mother Earth instead of one in La La Land along with my brain. Oh, I'd loathe the drug caused depression. I'd managed to transmute the madness of medical mania so it became a healing shamanic journey, integrating my childhood dreams and nightmares into a shiny new future. I gradually learned to manage my pain and insomnia with coping skills, creativity, community, comedy, and counseling. By doing this, I'd healed five supposedly incurable diseases by 80%. While I still had fibro, it was now manageable. Now it was this big instead of taking over my entire life. Off the drugs, I found the clarity and courage to face the trauma, grief, and rage behind the addiction. And surprisingly, it was a thousand times easier to do so unmedicated. It turns out you can't heal what you can't feel. Even when emotions numbed and sedated for decades exploded out of me like fireworks. Yes, the rage and grief were enormous, 
the happiness and joy too were high as the sky. I learned how to dance the darker emotions through and then out of my body. I have to think of the shrank who pushed benzos on me. And boy, <laughs> in my mind, I ran into him in a nice dark alley and his ass is grass and his nuts are in 2030. That would always make me laugh and I'd dance in the happiness and joy of getting my life back when I thought I'd lost it forever. Telling our stories heals. As I lived through Benzo Oz, I told my community, the West End, all the gory details and they loved it and lapped them up. So too did the farmer's market folks who also believe in drug-free lives, farms and animals. Though I'd lost a boyfriend and a friend who preferred me drug disabled and dependent, I'd found companions and even love on the supernatural plane who supported me that during the worst of drug withdrawal odds. In Benzo Oz, I'd found Glinda, my Aphrodite, my Scarecrow, the drag queen, Tin Man, Louie, the cowardly lion, me, and the persona of pirate who had all helped enormously in my healing journey, giving me love and support when I most needed it and was alone to quit and stay clean. Now it was time to learn to survive unassisted and stand on my own two feet. I had faith. After all, I'd broken out of pharma prison and escaped benzo -Oz. Then came the shocking incident that catapulted me sideways into bizarro Oz, where black is white and up is down. Imagine yourself as Dorothy tapping your glittery shoes three times and just as you think you're safely on your way home to you, you're up screaming into a smoking apocalyptic landscape where the animals are mutant monstrosities holding Uzis and shooting at you. I would have to dig deeper than any archeologist to uncover then recover my own stolen and buried brain, heart, and courage to survive the strange and parallel world that became bizarro all.